Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Top 5 video. Today I have Caleb and Alicia here to show off their top 5 games of all time. Now, they are newer gamers. They basically got into gaming, what, this year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What's the uh, most uh, common game you played before hanging out with us? Before? <laughs> yes. Um, probably like Monopoly. <laughs> I was going to say Nobody the same would thing. play it with me, so I'd play it by myself online. The Game of Life? Yeah. Uno. Oh, yeah, cheesy, <laughs> backgammon. Life sucks. <laughs> yes, <it does. laughs> what about you? Any games? Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> what about you? What do you got? No, it'd pretty much be the same. Monopoly, Uno. Um... Oh, yeah, you made me play Uno online. That was yeah, terrible. Yeah, that note was on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you guys have played some video games though, like uh, Among Us would be one of those popular oh, ones. Oh, I never played that, but I always played Epic Mickey. I loved playing that game. I could get it done in a week. Yeah, we got a Mickey <laughs> game already here that he wants to play, so we'll try that out. Disney style. Okay, so we have some newer gamers, but I threw them into the deep end of the pool, so to speak, and uh, we've been playing quite a few games over the last six months, and I'm curious as to what their top five favorite games are, or I was. I know what they are, but you guys are going to know. We're going to talk about those games right now in number five. Five. And we'll just go off uh, from, uh, I guess, this order left to right, and they'll tell us their games. I'm not going to do my games. I'll just talk about these ones here. But I will do one at the end of the year, the top games of the year. So, ready, Caleb? What is your number five favorite game? Specter Ops. Specter Ops. This is Specter Ops right here. It's covering Alicia up. Specter Ops <laughs> is what? Can you explain the game? It is a hidden movement game where you play as uh, these agents and you're trying to track down the, what would be the technical term? Of mm, it's agent, it's the hunters versus the agent. Okay, so the... The hunters are the people that are going out and looking for the agent. It is a hidden movement game. I believe it plays uh, two to five players. But if you're playing with five players, one of the hunters is actually on the agent's team. So there's a little <laughs> bit of a mix there. We didn't try that one, but we did play the other variants of the game. I believe we played three and four players. Mm -hmm. And Spectre Ops is, yeah, you're gonna have one player with a little cheat sheet that goes and marks their locations, and the hunters are searching for that agent player. And if the agent player can get to the three different locations and out in time, they survive. It's a pretty classic game. Uh, I played it for quite a bit of time I've owned this game since I started reviewing games, and uh, I really enjoy this one. I think it's a good choice of yours. Why do you like it? What's the what's the what's the draw? I like it because it's got this very mysterious element to it. It's kind of suspenseful too because you don't know what the hunters are gonna do on their moves, but you can kind of track them and track your own movements at the same time. So that being a hidden movement game, there's just it's very suspenseful, and I like suspenseful type of games. What about you, Alicia? Do you like this game? I do like it. I don't think I would like um, being the one player, though. I like to work with other people. That's the people. best part, though. No, I would be too stressed. I would be, like, really anxious, trying to catch people. I don't think I could do it. I'd but... say one of the hardest things, though, was utilizing the car because a lot of the times we'd only use the car one time playing as the hunter. Oh, the car. Yeah. yeah the this car, travels yeah. around. You can go inside of it and you can move around the board and you get farther, but you can't find uh, the agent while you're in it. So you're kind of utilizing its abilities, but you're not able to actually shoot the agent because you have to defeat them. You can't just find them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, overall, this is a, a really cool game and it's what I've owned for a while and I'll probably keep keep it in my collection for quite some time because it's one of those easy hidden movement games that uh, facilitates uh, quite a few players and it's something that I can just jump in and jump out of rather uh, rather simply. All right, so Spectrops is your number five. Uh, Alicia, what about you, number five? I would say, say anything. Say anything. This is a game by North Star Games. I've owned this for quite some time as well. Wrong answers have never felt so right. So tell us about Say Anything. It's party game, and I love party games because they're social and they're funny, and you can write whatever you want in this <laughs> game. You basically, um, there's a judge that picks a question, and everyone writes down an answer to that question, and they cater it towards the judge. The judge picks their favorite secretly, and everyone guesses which one they're going to pick, and everyone gets points based on the answer that's chosen. 
Yeah, yeah, it's basically a free for all. You can yeah. draw on it. Uh, you can create little like uh, sentences or simply a single word if you want. If you're not very social, it's okay too because you're not actually having to say anything while you say anything. <laughs> uh, you just simply write it down, and people can kind of be the judge as to what they'd like to choose. Um, and I, I like it. It's 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 kind of a mix between like a judging game meets a game that's a little more diversified when it comes to being creative. So it's a good yeah. choice. This is one that I can th I think anybody can get their hands on and, and jump in and you can play with as many players as you want. It says four to eight, but in reality, as long as you add some more extra scorecards and some extra pens, you can yeah. go ahead and play with as many players as you'd yeah. like. You like this game, Galen? I do, I thought it was fun. Yeah, this is not as good as privacy though to you, right? <laughs> no. Caleb likes uh, the spicy game. This is spicy. <laughs> An honorable like, mention. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like this one because you can make it as spicy or as like. Yeah, it's, chill it's, it's as very. You, want. It's, you can bring this to grandma, yeah. but you can also bring this out when it's time with with the boys <laughs> out. You but know? this is like privacy, but you know who is saying what though. Well, yeah, you do, and uh, yeah, I, but it's all still... about the judge, though. That's why yeah. it matters who the judge Catering is picking. to the judge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the judge likes spiciness, <laughs> you can write some real spicy things. What did you write? Keeping up with the goods. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> say anything. North Star Games, four to eight players, and it takes like I don't know. 45 minutes to an hour. You can play as really as long as you want. This is a great party game that... All right. All right, we'll mix it up now. Ready? Instead of you, you for number four. <laughs> number four. Yes. Mm. Um, she didn't really write these things down. She's no, just, I didn't. She's just going off of, like, a gut feeling. I think number feeling. four was... Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Hunger. The Hunger. Okay. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> the Hunger is by Renegade Game Studios. This is a Richard Garfield game. Richard Garfield makes a lot of games. He's a great designer. Uh, this one here is about what? You are chasing... You are going around the board... As? As a... Are you the hunter? No, you're a vampire. Okay, you're the vampire, and you're trying to... Eat some humans. <laughs> yes, you start off in a castle in the middle of the board as a vampire. You move around the board, attempting to get to the farthest edges of the island and then back. It's kind of hard to see here probably. But, uh, yeah, you're going to be basically moving around the board, getting all the way to the end to get this rose, and then getting all the way back. If you can't make it, that's okay. You don't have to go all the way around the board to win. In fact, you can even go just halfway. You're eating humans, finding new vampires. It's, a, it's like a light deck builder. It's kind of like the game mm -hmm. Clank for those of you gamers out there. Uh, but for those of you who are not gamers, you start with a small deck, you build a slightly, sm uh, sm st slightly smarter one and slightly larger one, and you utilize the cards you get as points. And you're just trying to score as many points as possible and there's a ton of different spaces and cards you can use there's objectives there's locations on the board that all do different things and beautiful artwork yeah mm -hmm. i love moving around the board in this game trying to get to the end trying to get the rows and then moving back and i love the deck building aspect to it yeah, there's actually an expansion coming out soon, which we will be getting a chance to play, I'm sure, very soon in the next couple months here by Renegade. Um, and all the pieces are, are really nice too, nice and thick pieces. All the cards work really well. You know what all the cards do. You understand them pretty clearly. There's only a mm -hmm. few little things where I'm like, I don't know what this actually does. But for the most part, uh, it's, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, it's not necessarily, I would say, for anybody. But I think for any of you gamers out there who have played a few, just a couple, you'll, you'll get this one down pretty quickly. Caleb, The Hunger. I'd have to agree. It's if you know you like this type of game, then um, what do I want to say there? Sorry, I it's okay. That it's up. something like what? That's like a <sighs> you, if you like deck builders. Is it you like Clank better, right? Yeah, I mean, I did, I did like this game actually. Um, I liked the aspect of being yeah. able to pick different vampires and being able to use them against the different humans that were on your track and you'd be able to use those for points at the end of the game as well. Racing so, against yeah. time kind of yeah, a thing. Yeah, exactly. Trying to get back to the castle before the sun hits, otherwise you're toast. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tell me what you do like. You're number four. Okay, uh, I'd have to say four would be Fortune and Famine. All right, Fortune and Famine is actually a Kickstarter game that I reviewed not too long ago. This plays two to six players. It's about 15 minutes a player, and it's by Mid-Level Meeple. And Fortune and Famine is a tableau management game, but it's a little bit more than that as well. You want to try and explain a, a bit about it? 
So Fortune and Famine, you have these different workers that you place on your board, but you also get, um, what are they called? You get wit, sorry, let me start that No, it's okay, you're good, keep going. <laughs> um, you also get um, what, wizards yes. that you can put on your board to, to defeat uh, other what are you defeating? Well, That's so you're, it's a bidding game, right? And yeah. you're trying to bid on workers. There's advanced workers and basic workers. There's wizards. There's dark wizards. And your objective is, as the king or queen that you can choose from, is to bid and get the best board, uh, best the best board possible, so that you can acquire gold, which will then allow you to acquire the most important resource of all, which is grain. Uh, yes. Grain is going to go into your bag at the end of every round, and if it's in your bag, it's safe. There's ways in which you're going to be able to put them into your bag, and whoever has the most uh, grain at the end of the game is the winner because you're trying to store this grain at the end of the game and if you can store the most you win and it's got this like little twist to it where you're uh, betting mm -hmm. for the different pieces that are arriving the different workers and where you place them on your board there's restrictions as to what you can have on the board and yeah it's kind of one of those like light bidding tableau management game that's all about resource control it's got a mix of a lot of stuff in here and there's quite a few little um, little variants that you can play with with fortune and famine there's a deluxe mode as well uh, I I enjoy this game quite a bit. It's a really cool little bidding style game. I know yes. that you and Alicia played this together not too long ago. And Alicia, yeah. what do you like about it? Um, I like it a lot more with a lot of people. Yeah. I think it's a lot more fun that way. Uh, it stinks at two players, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. It stinks at two yeah, players. It was, yeah, it was not good at yeah. two players because basically <laughs> the first person just gets the card. Exactly. Well, the yeah, there's card. there's some yeah. minutia to that, but yes, yeah. so you, it's better with four or five players. You want to play mm -hmm. with as many players as you possibly can because that's mm -hmm. where bidding is fun. Every bidding game is more fun when there's more bidders. If you're bidding with just one other player, it's kind of like, eh, whatever. But... Yeah. I enjoy exactly. this game quite a bit. We play this on our live stream. Um, and I think we had like four or five players. And there was a ton mm -hmm. of fun stuff going yeah. on. You can like mess with other players, stealing <laughs> their grain, taking the cards that they want. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fortune Bam is a really cool little game. It's a good choice. Yeah. Yes. And I had a card in the game that would basically protect me from somebody stealing something from me too. So. <laughs> yeah. And there's your, king, your kings and queens also protect you as well in certain ways. They have special abilities. Number three. Go ahead. Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Uh, <laughs> this one here is called Cthulhu Wars Duel. This is the one that Caleb has played. Now, there is a Cthulhu Wars, which is by uh, Sandy Peterson. It is a large miniatures game, which Caleb hasn't played. But this one here is a two-player game in which you play as one of the great old ones, and you attempt to defeat your opponents. It's a almost... Um, I guess there's some dice rolling involved in the attacking, but there's a lot of strategic choice. If you'd like risk, but want a little bit less die rolling, a little bit more control, this is going to be a fun one for you. Lots of different factions, yes. and you can mix and match. This is just one of them. There's another one called Extinction, and you can choose whatever board you want, whatever character you want. It comes with all those things. Um, it's going to have no minis in it, though. It's all standees. Uh, so it's kind of like a light version of the very expensive large version game. A smaller box, fits anywhere, and you could play on a smaller table surface. But it only plays two players. Even if you add extra game modes, it's still going to be just two players. But uh, I really think this is a great option for those of you who do not or cannot afford a large variant on the Cthulhu Wars. What did you think about it? Um, I really liked, I mean, even though there were little standees in there versus like little, like, I guess. Still good art. Yeah, yeah, it was really good art. And I liked how the character that I played, which was the great Cthulhu, he could, if he was in a body of water, you could take him back to your board and then spawn him up and set up a trap on somebody else's monster. So I liked just that kind of like battle-esque type of feature about the game that you're basically going head to head and I it was a pretty close game too. Yeah, you and you and Kelly very close. I was hoping you wouldn't bring this one out because now I have to talk <laughs> about my experience. No, let's not talk about it. Okay, you can talk about it. <laughs> no. What did you think about Cthulhu Wars do? I don't like it. It, yeah. it makes me anxious. Oh yeah? <laughs> Why is that? You you're you're very good at the game. No. No, uh, I, I would say so. <laughs> Uh, we played a game, and uh, what was the score at the end? I can't recall. Uh, I don't remember. 30-something to 4. <laughs> she destroyed me, and then destroyed me, and it, it crushed my hopes and dreams. I'm actually a pretty good player at Cthulhu Wars for the most part, but uh, she put me into this cycle where I just couldn't get out of it, and it just... 
decimated me. Uh, that being said, the game's really good. Uh, I, I've, I've now learned from my mistake. I'll never let that happen again. But yeah, Cthulhu being able to eat players. There's, there's some slight changes in this one compared to the original game. Things are a little bit cheaper or a little bit more expensive because they kind of balance it out a bit different. But it, it messed me up because I wasn't prepared for it. And when it happened and I noticed this like reoccurring pattern of like sucking my dudes up and me placing them out and then getting sucked <laughs> up again, uh, I had just dug myself into a hole that was far too deep to get out of. Uh, but yes, uh, this is a cool little game, especially for two players. If you want a two-player war game that's really quick, you know, it's not like a 10-hour game of Risk, then Cthulhu Wars Duel is the way to go. Especially if you want the big minis, then you go for the Cthulhu Wars. I also like the tracker that you could spend money on to advance it up so that you can basically make the game Yeah, go by you can choose and... to battle to win the game and get points, or you can choose to spend the points that you've gained during the game to give yourself victory points. Uh, that will also shorten the game mode up and potentially let you push ahead from somebody who might be better tactically than you, which is pretty cool as well. Cthulhu Wars Duel, good choice. Uh, except unless you're playing with her, then it's a terrible choice. <laughs> All right, okay. Alicia, what don't do you got? What do you got? Yet. I won't! I ain't! I even stated that. I'm like, damn, I ain't playing with you again. You're evil. What do you want to play? What's your next one? Um, Moving on from that travesty, I still have flashbacks from it. <laughs> I would say... Ah, uh, uh, Cthulhu Wars Duel. Let me get... Don't get me started about that game. Oh, okay, okay. You can go ahead. Go ahead. Darkness Comes Rattling. Darkness Comes Rattling. All right, so this is by Kevin Wilson. Um, and I didn't know that this was by Kevin Wilson when I asked for it from Weird. Uh, it's a really cool little game. Tell us about it. So it's a cooperative game where the there's a snake yep. and some, some bad guys that are trying to kill you. And then you've got to defeat the snake. And it is a game in which you not only have to defeat the snake uh, by just like battling it, but like yeah. there's areas on the board where you have to go to, you have cards you'll have to deal with, and then after you do so, you'll choose one champion, which is the really cool part, right? And mm -hmm. what happens? What do you have to do with them? The, that guy goes on to the snake and he will go all the way around till he gets to the end. Yeah, he has to capture the sun, basically. The snake yeah. is trying to eat the sun, Orbos is trying to eat the sun, and you are battling all the monsters while the snake is like eating the sun and bringing it back. And so you have this like timer that's going on. It's kind of a little bit of mixed like pandemic-y, it's got kind of like an RPG type of a feel, and then one champion goes in and you can help your champion from outside of the snake, which is kind of cool. And you're trying to move him as long as, po as quick as possible before the sun gets eaten up. Uh, yeah, this was a, like, I guess, I'd say a hidden gem. I was very, very shocked with how great this game was. I didn't know what to expect with it. Uh, high quality, beautiful yes. artwork, like, just everything about it I really enjoyed. Yeah, the board looks really cool. I like how the characters, if they die, you become this, like, spirit, and you're not, like, dead forever. You're just... You're just this cute little spirit. Yeah, you don't actually go out of the game when you get dead. Yeah. It does hurt you. You do suffer uh, cooperatively. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all the characters, right, you can actually work with the different gods, the god of the wind and the god of this and the god of that to kind of like work together in order to successfully achieve your mission, which yeah. is kind of cool. And I'm not usually a fan of dice rolling, but this one was really awesome because it had a lot of mitigation to the dice rolling. Oh, yeah. So it made the dice rolling fun. Yeah, uh, Kevin Wilson is a great designer, and uh, this game is, is, is really, really good. I think it deserves a lot more praise. I was very shocked that I hadn't heard of this game when I picked it up and played it, but I guess that's a nice, like, refreshing shock, right? You didn't play this, so you have no comment, but no comment. it's good. Darkness <laughs> yeah. Comes Rattling you is good. You gotta play it with us so that you know. <laughs> All right, now we're on to number what? What are we on now, number two? Two. Yeah, two. Two. Uh, two for you, what do you got? <laughs> Cubitos. Cubitos. This is a John DeClaire game. Uh, John DeClaire is a designer for AEG for the most part. He actually designs other games. Like he's got one coming out from Brotherwise Games pretty soon here. I couldn't tell you the name of it. Maybe Callie can in the back corner there. John declares new game. Empire something. That's the game. Empire's End. Empire's End. There you go. <laughs> Shout out to the new Empire's End by Brother Wise Games. Hopefully that's the name. I don't know. I'll have a, I'll have a picture somewhere. <laughs> Cuba Toast, however, is a dice chucking game. It's a dice building game of sorts. It reminds me of, oh, I can't, I keep forgetting this die name where you're, you're gathering. It starts with an M. Is it? Does it start with an M? How do you know? Because you talk about it all the time. Ma, ma. I, I can't remember. But you're in that game, you're chucking dice to buy more dice, to chuck more dice, to get characters to fight each other. Oh, wait, that's a different one. Never mind. 
In this one, <laughs> you're chucking dice in a race. You'll make up your little, we have our little race board. You have um, your little characters, the little cute, like little meeples, your little sheeps and whatnot. And you build dice to move, to fight, and all that good stuff. What do you like about Cubitos? <laughs> this one got a lot of like mixed reception, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I guess. <sighs> There's no wrong answer. What did you did you enjoy the dice crafting, the racing, the big cheese in the middle of the box? <laughs> it's SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that it was a different version of doing like like a not a deck builder, but where you're Yeah, it's like a deck yeah. builder, but it's like a dice builder. It's a very yeah. unique concept that not a lot of games have um, manipulated very well. Yes. Uh there are a few. Um there's one by I believe um Oh my gosh, the guy who does uh, a lot of the, I got his name over there, I can't think of his name. He did uh, <laughs> Seven Sins, he's done, I can't remember his name, but he did a dice game that he was like Marvel <laughs> dice, so it was all the different Marvel characters. I'm gonna get in trouble in the comments here, I know, because I should know his name. Um, he's a friend of mine on Facebook, that's how bad it is, right? But anyway, uh, this, has, this is a lot of those type of games where you're basically chucking dice to get new dice. But this one here involves a little bit of a racing element, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think the cover was a shame, but otherwise the game's fun. <laughs> I mean, it, it does a really good job of it, I think. Yeah. Uh, if you want a chuck, chucking dice game with racing, it's fun. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that you get to build your own dice, you get to buy new dice that, and put them together to make your own strategy to run around the board. So that's fun. and. The... We had to convince Caleb to play this game too. But, and, and now it's in his top right? five. And it was because of the art though too, so... <laughs> yeah, he like looked at the back of it and he was like, yeah, that doesn't look fun, I don't want to play it. And I'm like, no, we should play it, you'll like it. You should listen to me. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's a cool little game. Uh, it's not one of my favorite of John DeClaire's personally. Uh, I've got a few other personal favorites, but it's, it is a good game. It's a game I'd easily... Uh, you want to chuck dice? Cool, let's play Cubitos. Right? And, and let me... They tried to get me to play it probably seven times. Not exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the next next one up on the docket... For number For you, two, yeah. For uh, you. Would be <laughs> Viticulture. <laughs> This one, this one right here. Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, okay, yep. this is it. This is Viticulture. This is a mm -hmm. uh, Jamie. Well, it's not a Jamie Stegmeier. I mean, it is a Stonemeyer game. Jamie's a game, but I think it's designed. By, oh no, it is by. Okay, it's a Jamie Stegmeier game. <laughs> it's it is a game in which you're what. Making wine! Yes, uh, this is the newest one. We just got Viticulture World because she wanted to play it, um, so we picked that one up from them. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got cooperative uh, wine building and competitive wine building, and you get the whole thing. There's a bunch of like uh, expansions, but you're you're growing the wine, you're smooshing the wine, you're turning the wine uh, into, the grapes into, into grapes, into wine, <laughs> and then it has a whole bunch. It is a worker placement. Yes. Uh, it's really pretty. There's a lot going on, and there's a lot of choice. Uh, what's your favorite part about viticulture? What's what's better about this than any other worker placement you've been playing? Um, I just I really like worker placement games, but I just really like that you're able to see the wine process. Like you build your structures to make better wine, and then you see the grapes turn into wine. So I like. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it has this it's nice cute. flow to it. There is yeah. a like thematic feel of like making the wine. It's a challenging game. Making sure you get everything perfect is hard to do, but when you do attempt to do something and you fulfill it within the time period you wanted to do so, it's like rewarding, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of worker placements don't get right. This one does a really good job of making you feel like I've went through step A, B, C, and D, and I got this done at the time I wanted to get it done, and it feels good when that happens. It also feels really bad when it doesn't happen, which I think yeah. is a nice, it's, it's a nice like twist to it as well. Uh, so you're like, next time I play this, I'm gonna make the best, most juiciest wine possible kind of a thing. <laughs> exactly. And all the expansions make the game feel a little different. The cooperative version is not just like a slight change in the rules here. It's a completely extra box with extra components with more of this than that and a change here and there um, that twists the game up, but not in a bad way. In fact, I was actually shocked as to how much I enjoy the Viticulture world. Uh, mm -hmm. If you had to choose playing which one, would you enjoy it the most? I don't know. I really like both of them, but <laughs> I maybe the cooperative one because I don't know. I like cooperative games. Mm. Um, but it was funny the 
we were playing with another person and he <laughs> left so i was basically playing two people <laughs> and yep. i ended up i ended up like giving him more points than myself it's hard to like think of other players that much yeah it's, it's got a good way of making it so that you don't actually have to worry about do this, do that, do this. You're yeah. worrying about your own stuff because there's almost too much for one person to be able to handle multiple roles. And so you have to kind of like take a step back. Okay, I've done this. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to play this player's turn. And you're like, okay, what did I do with this? Oh, uh, you know. So you're not like on the spot like, no, that's the best move possible. But you don't you don't actually know what the best move possible is. Yeah. Um, you just kind of have to wing it sometimes. And sometimes there is like not really a great choice as yeah. well, which I just happens. I feel like with the cooperative one, there was more to think about because mm -hmm. like you have to not only yourself but you have to think about everyone else everyone has to succeed or no one yeah. Yeah. exactly and i didn't know that at the very beginning of the game so by the last half of the game i was still at zero victory points on the board but i managed to get up you there, sure up there. The yep. very end but that was due to some cards that i had gotten during the game that allowed me to get a victory point at the beginning of every round that we played. Viticulture and Viticulture World, and there's also the expansion for Viticulture, which personally, uh, my one thing I would say is if you're gonna get Viticulture, you should buy the Tuscany expansion. If you don't wanna play the cooperative, you can just set this aside, but get Tuscany with Viticulture. There's a whole lot of extra stuff in it, and I think that's gonna be appreciated by most people, and it's not too complex to include with the game. I think Tuscany is like part of the game, and you're kind of like missing out if you don't uh, include that one. So, and normally I wouldn't say that. Most most expansions, I don't, I'm like, I don't care. You don't need that. It's just extra stuff. But with Tuscany, I, I would disagree. Okay, so I wasn't sure about where this one was going to be for both of them, <laughs> but apparently uh, I do know now. Uh, so, uh, what is your favorite game? Mystic, Mystic Veil. Vale. Yes, Mystic <laughs> Veil. Vale. Um, this is also one of my favorite games, actually. Uh, I, I convinced them both to think it's their favorite, which is good. That was my objective. This oh, yeah. is another John DeClaire game. And I'm not going to turn it too far to the side because I've got like a million things in here. I don't have the whole full game. The full game is like 15 expansions and a bunch of promos, but I do have a lot of it. I would say I have like 60% and I will have the other 40% on the 26th. I'm gonna go over there and steal the extra copies I need uh, to complete my arm is complete once again. And that's why I'm, I'm gonna try and get it all. Uh, but Mystic Veil vale is what? You guys can explain the game. Um, it's this deck builder where you build cards and you, you shuffle up your deck that you have in your hand and you deal out a few of them until you bust. And So it's a push your luck and a deck builder, right? Yeah. And it's not really just a deck builder. Technically, they get mad if you called it that. It's actually called, what, a card crafting? Card crafter, yeah. yeah. Crafting. Yep. I love that because I have never seen that before until I played this game where you can put clear plastic cards in yes. your card to make your card even better. Yeah. It's, it's so good that like a bunch of games have been integrating that crafting system into their game. Now, they're, I think um, if you can modernize it and change it, it's gonna be really good. Uh, but that shows a lot as to how good a concept is when mm. other people are going to take that concept and kind of create more. And I think that's what most games are about. Like mm -hmm. it starts with something and then it progresses from there. Every game started from another game. Um, and that just shows that this is being one of the original card crafting engines. It does an excellent job at that. There's so much to this game. I would say I have not actually played with every card in the game, even though I've played this game a lot. It's probably the most played game I have. Not my, not my most favorite game, but it's definitely up there. Uh, these are all the expansions I have. Plus, I have all the promos. I've got like I've got a ton of stuff. This, I have mats that it comes with. I've got the event edition portions. Yeah, it's really cool. The card crafting, you actually take your card like this, and then you turn it around, and as you can see, you'll be putting in advancements into it. You actually slide these little guys in here, and uh, whoosh, now you've got a card that does something when, from one that actually didn't do something. And yeah, you're just trying not to bust. It's kind of like a mix between like blackjack, um, what, blackjack meets a, a deck builder? So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a really cool game. So why is this your favorite games? You're both your favorite game. <laughs> Um, it's just a thing that I had never seen before until previously, and once I played it, I was like, oh, this is so cool, I want to keep playing it, and 
Yeah, it's one of the games we've played the most yes. since um, <laughs> we play basically a new game every day. And this is one that we actually repeat. Yes. Yeah, well, usually because you asked to repeat it. Yeah. You know, I want to play Mystic Veil again. I'm like, all right, that's fine. Let's do it. I don't know. It's just really fun. I like, I like I the like... fact that it's like a solo game, too. You're playing solitaire, yeah. mm -hmm. but you're playing it with other people. Yeah. Uh, if you like games that are like this, if you like the concept of this, but you want to play with people, uh, then there's another game. Uh, it's back here. It's called Dead... Reckoning, I think is the word. Dead Reckoning, yeah, yes. Dead Reckoning, and um, that one you're actually card crafting, but you're playing uh, with ships, battling other people. Uh, so I personally like the more solo aspect of this game, but uh, that one's not a bad one. In fact, it's pretty good. I, I, mm -hmm. I won the tournament for it um, at the designer's house. No, 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 uh, no, no, uh, <laughs> no broasting or anything. I just just sure. throw that out there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's a pretty cool little game. It's not as good as this one, in my opinion. But if you want something that's not just kind of, kind of like semi-competitive, where you're just trying to get the most points, uh, then then this is this is the one to go for, or that one for the competitive variant of it all. And I will say that it took me three tries to really get this game down, and just <laughs> watching you and see how you win. And by the fourth time I played it, because you sat out the last time we played. Yeah, there's a lot of variety of ways there's to win, a lot. though. Yeah. Yeah. But by the t the fourth time time that I had played it I had like I had just as many points that you had had when you had played it but it's just such a different game that it was something that I picked up on very quickly when you first brought it out so it just made sense to me it's very quick you flip cards over and then you either get what you need or you bust and if you bust you get a coin and you wait till the next round if you get what you need you buy stuff and when you buy stuff you get whatever it is you have uh, the currency for you got three money, you want a card for three, you take that card, you sleeve it in, and you're done. And you just rinse and repeat that. You could play with a million players in this game and, and organize it so that the games run really, really fast. Because you can all play at the same time. It doesn't really mm -hmm. matter. You're not really affecting other people. There are some cards that do that. I'm going to throw those out. Just play with the ones where you play by yourself. Because <laughs> it's all about making the best deck. You're trying to make the best deck you possibly can make. And it has to be better than everybody else's based on the cards that are available to you. And there's some like, oh, you took my card, Michael. I wanted the tree. Sorry, all the time. I got the tree. All the time. <laughs> So yes, Mr. Veil is a good choice. I'm glad I did not uh, make you guys see the light by forcing you to play it enough times to make it your favorite. <laughs> but uh, yes, it's a, it's a lot of fun game. Uh, it's a really fun game. So if you're interested in any of these games, there will be links down below in the description for you to pick them up or take a look at them. I, I enjoy all these games, actually. I think these are all great choices. Um, it, my list would probably be, I'd probably organize it a little differently from you guys, but I think that the number one game of all these is, is definitely Mystic Veil. It's by far my favorite choice of these, but they're all really fun. I've played these games multiple times in multiple different variations. So good lists. Well done. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very honored to say that I've taught you well. We'll see if the comments agree with me though. Maybe I, I, I goofed and I should have had you play something else. Somebody's going to be like Imperium, Twilight Imperium 4th edition. And I'll be like, yeah, that's an eight-hour game. How about not? Okay, because I'm going to play that game. Uh, I have the third edition down there. You going to play an eight-hour game? Yeah. No. no. Why not? Absolutely not. No, this I got, is I, not. Nobody got time for this that. This is not the first time that you two thrown out a long game. <laughs> hey, we played Caverna, okay? That was, I like that yeah, one. Yeah, that's that a great one game. That was really fun. I know, that's why I bought it. Uh, it's basically The Sims. But yeah, so like I said, those are some really cool games. Top five from you. So thank you guys so much for coming on and talking about your top five games. Hope you had some fun. And uh, if you want to get have any of these games uh, from my collection that you enjoy, I'll just go ahead and let you keep them after the video. How about that? Yeah, I'm just kidding. These are mine. Go get your own games. There's a link down below in the description that you can go and... <laughs> wow. Well, the good thing is we know where to find you, so... That's true. I guess you can come over here and play. But no, this is my Mystic Veil. I have not even got it all yet. I just remember this was one video on YouTube where the guy's like, surprise, these are for you now. And they're like, oh, really? And I'm like, hell no, I'd never do that. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Top 5 video. I look forward to having you guys back on and talk about more of your Top 5 games. Maybe we'll do Top 5 games you hated. Oh yeah, that would be great. That would be, uh, be a list for sure, I'm, I, I think. Mm -hmm. And also you can check out our website on FiltereGamer.com. There's blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, etc, etc. Brian does his own Top 5s on Instagram and we have a bunch of stuff there as well. Uh, there's a live stream every Wednesday, no, Sunday. At what time? 
6.30 p.m. PST. <laughs> and if you'd like, you can subscribe to the channel. If you watched all the way through, then you might as well. You've spent all this time listening to me speak, and then you guys speak as well. Uh, you might as well click on the button so that you can see more of our content. We'll be doing more top five videos as the weeks go on and a bunch of uh, reviews for games, literally just like these ones. These are a lot of the games that I reviewed based on Kickstarters, etc. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing, seeing you guys, guys next time. time. I wasn't sure if you were gonna do another <laughs> one. Mr. Failing. I mean, I knew what he was going for. See you guys next time. Well, it could have been Next time, else. next, next time. time.